G'day guys, two videos in a week. What is going on? Well, uh, I feel like I need to keep you guys up to date. I put out that video yesterday, um, or this morning actually, and I have got tons of messages. I was working today filming for Street Machine and my phone was going mental uh, with really awesome people messaging me, giving me advice, helping me out, even just saying, hey, I'm going through the same thing. I get it, it sucks. So thank you to everyone, it's been amazing. Um, yeah, so the drama is actually continuing and it's getting a little worse, unfortunately. So my plan was, as we saw yesterday, I stripped everything out of the car, took the engine and everything out, took the box off, took the head off, all that sort of stuff. That's fine. The inside of this engine is not good. It's pretty filthy. And I was like, whatever, we'll just get it done. And then I'll build my new race engine later on. So I got a message today from Wayne Brennan. We've chatted a little bit. He's a legend of the sport. Just He's done a lot of racing in carts and XLs. Really nice guy. Um, and he goes to me, look, when you take, take the sump off that engine, check um, your crankshaft cap number three. They are prone to braking. I was like, okay, no worries. Um, and it's a known thing with the XLs. When you race them, they stress, they crack, and there are fixes. You know, Adam Macro um, does a, a girdle, and you know, you've got to get a machine, the cap machine down. You put a girdle over top, strings it up. Same with uh, Les Small and a bunch of other people do these strengthening caps. Um, and I was like, okay, I hope it's not broken because that's going to be a problem. Because if it is broken, you do need to get another cap, but it won't fit properly. You do need to get the whole thing line board. So that's basically everything out of the engine, crank everything out, off to a machine, just get it fully line board, and then oversized bearings, all this stuff that isn't going to happen this week. I'll tell you that much. So got home from work, got the light under the um, old engine. Guess what's there? Two massive cracks in cap three. Now, look, I've been beating the crap out of this car with that cracked. God knows, it could have been cracked when I bought the car, who knows? And nothing has happened. But I was just chatting to, you know, my mate Aaron uh, Semler, who I raced with in South Australia, he's gonna be at Bathurst too. And we're talking about it and I said, if that engine grenaded because of that at Bathurst and I knew it was broken and I didn't do anything about it, I would be so angry at myself for not fixing it. So, it looks like we're going to have to go with my new engine. This wasn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to save that engine and take my time and build it up, but I don't think I want to risk going to Bathurst with a broken mains cap on my crankshaft. I just don't want to risk it. So I just popped the sump off of the new engine, looked, that cap is fine. So I'm gonna pop it off, I'm gonna get it machined, get a girder for it, get it all perfect. And that'll be nice and strong. Now, if I'm gonna do that, I'm just gonna throw everything at this. So I don't have time to do new rings and all that sort of stuff, which sucks, I really wanted to do that. I just don't have the time for that. But what I do have time for is to put all, I've got a bench full of parts over there that I've been gathering for this new engine. So I'm gonna put everything on it. I've got a new water pump, I've got a new clutch, I've got a new timing belt kit, I've got uh, new head studs, which I have to do new head studs anyway, because the head studs are torque to yield, which basically means once you've done them up, they stretch, that's it, they're done. You gotta chuck them out. So I've got new uh, head studs there. I've got a new head gasket, and as long as it measures up properly, I spoke to uh, Adam Macro, uh, rang me today, God is a legend, and gave me a bunch of advice on all this sort of stuff, and showed me how to measure up uh, the squish on the pistons and all this sort of stuff. He's a really nice guy, and he's, he's helped me out a lot. So thank you, Adam. Um, you're a gentleman of the sport, and I appreciate all your help. He sent me little videos on how to do all this, and, and where to drill for the engine sealing, all that sort of stuff. So once again, thank you, Adam. Um, and so I've got a thinner head gasket, which we're allowed to run and it gives us hopefully a little more power, but I've got to measure that up and make sure I can run it. If I can't run it, I do have the, the standard gasket, which I can put in there. So I've got both options, which is cool. Um, yeah, but new everything. I'm going to just check the head out. If the head's clean, I'm going to leave it. Um, otherwise I'll pop the valves out. I'm going to give them a clean. I might even just give them a, a very light lap. I've got the, um, the, some fine paste and the lapping sticks and everything. So I might just give them a fine lap and just see if, if they're fine, I'll leave them, but otherwise might just, just a very fine lap just to make sure they're all lapped in nicely. Um, and I'm gonna scrub everything down and then put it all together as 
basically my new race engine. Not the race engine I wanted to do. I really wanted to, you know, balance the rods and pistons. I wanted to, you know, give it a bit of a, a hone job and do some new rings, but I just don't have the time to even get the rings or do any of this right now. So, so that's my plan. This, this is my plan, guys. I'm basically going to run the new head because it is so much cleaner. Like, you can't believe. I'll, I'll show some footage of how dirty this head is after I've cleaned it and how clean that head is. Even there's a chain guide in here for the chain because the two cams are held together where the chain and then the belt drives one of the cams. The chain guide on this looks like railway tracks. It is so worn and grooved. The chain guide on the new head is fine. It's got barely got any marks on it. Um, the underneath of the lifters are completely spotless. The underneath of these lifters are brown and gross. Um, there's so much carbon build up and crap in this head. Like, and, and the Ks as well. I've, I'm going to have to look back on my video, but I'm pretty sure that new engine has 114,000 kilometers on it. This has 240,000 kilometers on it. It's like, what do we got? Like 125, 126,000 more kilometers on the old engine that I just pulled out the car. So surely even just the springs on the valves are going to have much more life in them, be much more energetic. Um, same with, you know, the, the rings and everything, and it'd be much more sealed. I think just going with this fresher engine, younger engine that is so clean inside, it's obviously been very well serviced and very well looked after, is the way to go. So we'll use the VRS kit, put all new seals and gaskets in there and just make the best engine I can in the time I've got. Now, I don't need to do all of this before Saturday. So old mate's coming over to engine seal on Saturday. Um, I just need to do, I basically need to do everything in the head because the cams have to go back in, the cams will be sealed in, the head has to go on and the head has to be sealed. So I do have to measure up everything to make sure I can use that gasket, etc. Um, and if I want to do any lapping, obviously that has to be done first and the chain guide, all that needs to be done before old mate comes and seals it. But like that um, centre cap, I can do that after because the sump, sorry, I, I did say in the last video, the sump has to be sealed. The sump doesn't have to be sealed. It's actually the oil pump goes to the block. And obviously if you can't take the oil pump off, you can't get the crank out, yada, yada, yada. Um, so the sump can come off, stay off, which is good. So I can do that centre cap after he's left. Um, so I'm not in a huge rush to do that, thank God. Um, and what I'll do also is I'll get my flywheel resurfaced and I'll use my brand new clutch. I've got a brand new extreme clutch there too. Put that on there um, and just give myself the best chance. I, I'd rather not do all this work right now so close to Bathurst. I'd rather use a known entity, how the car was, but here we are. So that's my plan, guys. Sorry, not an interesting video. It's me sitting here talking to the camera again, but I feel anybody who is following along in this little adventure give you a bit of an explanation of what I'm doing. So yes, the new head, the new engine, um, and then all the new parts I've got sitting on that bench. Um, and I, yeah, and that should hopefully give us the best chance to go well, put it all together, give it a run in, I'll take it to a track day and beat the crap out of it and hopefully nothing breaks. And if it does, then I have to fix it for Bathurst and that's the way it is. Um, yeah, and so something I did want to mention, so this, this process is good. I think it needs to be done. Um, so everybody is running the same car, you know, the rules and regulations, it, it's all measured up. We all know everyone's running standard head, standard bottom end, all that sort of stuff. It's good. Um, and I am on the side of Sarah and Hyundai XL Racing, Racing Association, Circuit XL Racing Association. Um, but for anybody getting into the sport or anybody in the sport who is in my situation with a wrecker engine, just be aware some people say, you know, oh, I just whip the head off and all you need is a head gasket and some goo. That's not the case. Um, you know, the head bolts are torque to yield. You do need that. And honestly, once you've taken the whole engine out of the car, which you need to do, if you're going to do your gearbox as well, you're going to take the whole lot out, you'd be silly not to do the rest. Like you need to do a chain guide. You probably need to do a new chain, uh, depending on how many kilometers your engine's got on it. Um, you know, like the, a lot of the gaskets and the seals, like even this little pipe here. So this is the, what's called the uh, water bypass pipe or something like that. It's a little pipe that goes around the front of the engine. You've got to take that off. But mine hadn't been removed for so long. As soon as I took it off, it disintegrated. So I had to go and get another one of them. It's only 12 bucks, whatever. It's not a big deal. But just bear in mind that 
a lot of these engines, you know, they're sealed in the factory. When you start to take them apart, all these little gaskets and seals, they're all gone. So you'll definitely need a VRS kit, the, um, which has all the gaskets, all the seals. Like, that's my intake manifold gasket. Not reusing that, am I? So same with the exhaust manifold gasket, basically disintegrated. Um, just bear in mind, when you do this job, you're going to need a lot of this stuff. And if you're that far in, you might as well do as much as you can, you know fix all the problems, do your water pump, do your timing belt, do all that sort of stuff. So yeah, if anybody tells you like, oh, just get your engine sealed and you know, measured and sealed, you know, it's a quick job. Number one, it's not a quick job. And number two, it will cost you a little bit of money if you want to do it properly. And if you want to do it on cheap, that's cool, but you're probably pretty silly to be that far into the engine and not do at least maintenance stuff, you know. Um, that's just my little warning to you. That's I'm not paying anybody out, I'm just, I'm so nervous about offending somebody or pissing somebody off at the moment. Um, just be aware that when you do this, it's going to take time and money, okay? And everybody's going to have to do it within the next year, uh, regardless of what series you race in, okay? So, or what state you race in, or whether it's a club round or a state round or going to Bathurst, you know, it's everyone's going to have to eventually do this. And um, especially if you don't have mechanical knowledge and you're not lucky like me to have this glorious shed and an engine crane and all that sort of stuff um you're gonna have to pay someone to do it and i'm telling you now if you go to a mechanic and you get them to take the whole engine out and take the head off and do all this sort of stuff and get an engine sealer over to them to measure it all up it's going to cost you a couple of grand at least and that's not that's just labor that's not even parts so just budget that guys be aware of that sorry to be the bearer of bad news but that's kind of the way it is anyway on the upside we're building a mini race engine. Not exactly what we wanted, but we've got a new race engine coming. So uh, I've got a few nights this week. I'm gonna come in after I put my daughter to bed and I'm gonna spend some time in the garage here, cleaning you know, the mating surfaces, cleaning the deck, cleaning the head up um, and just getting everything ready and then drilling all the holes and everything ready for old mate to come on Saturday. Seal this puppy up and then once he's left, then I'll spend a bit more time scrubbing the rest and getting this engine back in the car and then test day also last bit of good news um a legend is sending me a new exhaust for this car and it's the exhaust i wanted to it's a very good exhaust i would have loved for my mate rob to build me one but he's just too busy and i completely understand that he's he's an incredible fabricator and that he should be busy but if i couldn't get him to do it i'm glad this exhaust is coming but we'll talk about that when it arrives anyway thanks for watching guys sorry me jabbering on again, but I just feel like anybody watching this is kind of invested in this little adventure. Um, and this is the reality of building race cars. Wait nights in the shed and spending lots of money. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you in the next episode.